the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Madam Secretary, I want to thank you very much for being here today to testify before Congress on this very important issue. This is your third time. This week, our chairman, Mr. Gowdy, was interviewed in a lengthy media profile. During his interview, he complained that he was, and I quote, he has an impossible job. That's what the chairman said, impossible job. He said it is impossible to conduct a serious, fact-centric investigation in such a, quote, political environment. I have great respect for the chairman, but on this score, he is absolutely wrong. In fact, it has been done by his own Republican colleagues in the House on this very issue, Benghazi. The Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee conducted an extensive bipartisan two-year investigation and issued a detailed report. The Senate Intelligence Committee and the Senate Homeland Security Committee also conducted a bipartisan investigation. Those bipartisan efforts respected and honored the memories of the four brave Americans who gave their lives in Benghazi. Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, Tyrone Woods, and Glenn Doherty. The problem is that the Republican caucus did not like the answers they got from those investigations. So they set up this select committee with no rules, no deadline, and an unlimited budget. And they set them loose, Madam Secretary, because you're running for president. Clearly, it is possible to conduct a serious bipartisan investigation. What is impossible is for any reasonable person to continue denying that Republicans are squandering millions of taxpayer dollars on this abusive effort to derail Secretary Clinton's presidential campaign. In the chairman's interview, he tried to defend against this criticism by attempting to cast himself as the victim. And he complained about attacks on the credibility of the select committee. His argument would be more compelling if Republicans weren't leading the charge. As we all know, Representative Kevin McCarthy, Speaker Boehner's second in command, and the chairman's close friend admitted that they established the select committee to drive down Secretary Clinton's poll numbers. Democrats didn't say that. The second in command in the House said that, a Republican. Republican Congressman Richard Hanna said the select committee was, quote, designed, designed to go after Secretary Clinton. And one of the chairman's own hand-picked investigators, a self proclaimed conservative Republican, charged that he was fired in part for not going along with these plans to, quote, hyper-focus on Hillary Clinton, end of quote. These stark admissions reflect exactly what we have seen inside the select committee for the past year. Let's just take a look at the facts. Since January, Republicans have canceled every single hearing on our schedule for the entire year, except for this one, Secretary Clinton. They also canceled numerous interviews that they had planned with the Defense Department and the CIA officials. Instead of doing that, they said they were going, what they were going to do, Republicans zeroed in on Secretary Clinton, her speechwriters, her IT staffers, and her campaign officials. This is what the Republicans did, not the Democrats. 
When Speaker Boehner established this select committee, he justified it, justified it by arguing that it would, quote, cross ju jurisdictional lines. I assume he meant we would focus on more than just Secretary of State. But Madam Secretary, you're sitting there by yourself. The Secretary of Defense is not on your left. The Director of the CIA is not on your right. That's because Republicans abandoned their own plans to question those top officials. So instead of being cross-jurisdictional, Republicans just crossed them off the list. Last weekend, the chairman told the Republican colleagues to shut up and stop talking about the select committee. What I want to know is this, and this is a key question. Why tell the Republicans to shut up when they are telling the truth, but not when they are attacking Secretary Clinton with reckless accusations that are demonstrably false? Why not tell them to shut up then? Carly Fiorina has said that Secretary Clinton has blood on her hands. Mike Huckabee accused her of ignoring the warning calls from dying Americans in Benghazi. Sec S Senator Ryan Paul said Benghazi was a 3 a.m. phone call that she never picked up. And Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted, where the hell were you on the night of the Benghazi attack? Everyone on this panel knows these accusations are baseless from our own investigation and all those before it. Yet, Republican members of this select committee remain silent. On Monday, the Democrats issued a report showing that none of the 54 witnesses the committee interviewed substantiated these wild Republican claims. Secretary Clinton did not order the military to stand down, and she neither approved nor denied requests for additional security. I ask that our report be included in the official record for today's hearing, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. What is so telling is that we issued virtually the same report a year ago. Same report. When we first joined the Select Committee, I asked my staff to put together a complete report and database setting forth the questions that had been asked about the attacks and all of the answers that were provided in the eight previous investigations. I ask that this report uh, also be included in the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. The problem is that rather than accepting these facts, Republicans continue to spend new conspiracy theories that are just as outlandish and inaccurate. For example, the chairman recently tried to argue that Sidney Blumenthal was Secretary Clinton's primary advisor on Libya. And this past Sunday, Representative Pompeo claimed on national television that Secretary Clinton relied on Sidney Blumenthal for most, for most of her intelligence on ben Libya. Earlier this week, the Washington Post fact checker awarded this claim four Pinocchios. It's worst rating. Here's the bottom line. The select committee has spent 17 months and $4.7 million of taxpayer money. We've held four hearings and conducted 54 interviews and de depositions. Yes. We have received some new emails from Secretary Clinton, Ambassador Stevens, and others. And yes, we have conducted some new interviews. But these documents and interviews do not show any nefarious activity. In fact, it's just the opposite. The new information we have obtained confirms and corroborates the core facts we already knew from eight previous investigations. They provide more detail, but they do not change the basic conclusions. It is time, it is time, and it is time now for the Republicans to end this taxpayer-funded 
fishing expedition. We need to come together and shift from politics to policy. That's what the American people want, shifting from politics to policy. We need to finally make good on our promises to the families. And the families only ask us to do three things. One, do not make this a political football. Two, find the facts. Three, do everything in your power to make sure that this does not happen again. And so we need to start focusing on what we here in Congress can do to improve the safety and security of our diplomatic corps in the future. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. He has an impossible job. That's what the chairman said, impossible job. He said it is impossible to conduct a serious, fact-centric investigation in such a, quote, political environment. I have great respect for the chairman, but on this score, he is absolutely wrong. In fact, it has been done by his own Republican colleagues in the House on this very issue, Benghazi. The Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee conducted an extensive bipartisan two-year investigation and issued a detailed report. The Senate Intelligence Committee and the Senate Homeland Security Committee also conducted a bipartisan investigation. Those bipartisan efforts respected and honored the memories of the four brave Americans who gave their lives in Benghazi. Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, Tyrone Woods, and Glenn Doherty. Millions of taxpayer dollars on this abusive effort to derail Secretary Clinton's presidential campaign. In the chairman's interview, he tried to defend against this criticism by attempting to cast himself as the victim. And he complained about attacks on the credibility of the select committee. His argument would be more compelling if Republicans weren't leading the charge. As we all know, Representative Kevin McCarthy, Speaker Boehner's second in command, and the chair. The problem is that the Republican caucus did not like the answers they got from those investigations. So they set up this select committee with no rules, no deadline, and an unlimited budget. And they set them loose, Madam Secretary, because you're running for president. Clearly, it is possible to conduct a serious bipartisan investigation. What is impossible is for any reasonable person to continue denying that Republicans are squandering the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The truth the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Madam Secretary, I want to thank you very much for being here today to testify before Congress on this very important issue. This is your third time. This week, our chairman, Mr. Gowdy, was interviewed in a lengthy media profile. During his interview, he complained that he was, and I quote,